Thank you all for coming out tonight and watching this amazing series. Uh, I'm Mark Leikert, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Backstage Magazine, and I am ecstatic to be sitting on stage tonight with Taya Leone, who is starring as Elizabeth McCord of Madam Secretary. So, come on out. Find your mark? Yes, it's okay. my, my mark. I'm usually better at it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on getting an early renewal this Thank year you. for season two. <laughs> I'm curious, were you still filming when you found out about the, the renewal? Yeah, we were. <laughs> we were. We were. We were. We were. Yes, we were. <laughs> Do I even need this? I'm an actor. I can project. Should I, is it okay? Okay. That was creepy. Um, yeah, we, we were actually still filming. So it was, that was a, and we were tired a little bit. It was January. So that was really good news. That kind of gave you a little kick in the butt to make it to the finish line. It was great. Well, did that, I mean, was the season already set or did the renewal kind of give you some liberties, give you permission to uh, take some liberties with the storyline in terms of setting up, knowing that you were going to have a season two? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right then. <laughs> I can be more helpful, but no, it, it really didn't. I mean, I think we were just, you know, you start thinking about, uh, this idea of a, what the next arc's going to be. And yeah. we knew already that we were going to sort of finish with the Marsh story. Uh, and I don't even think they know what they're going to do next <laughs> season yet. So. Well, you had been away from TV for a while, so what, what about Madam Secretary was said, this is the project that I want to come back with? Well, I think, uh, you know, I think in hindsight it was a little crazy. But uh, at the time... I thought it was a good idea. I'd, I'd been doing, <laughs> I, I'd been doing film and sort of working, you know, film. You wrap it up in a couple of months, and and then you go back to your life. And I think the kids were getting older, and I sort of thought they were ready. And then my son confirmed it for me when I said, "I'm, you know, I'm thinking, Miller, about going back to work, but this is going to be kind of could be a long gig." I mean, I could be gone a lot. And I was like, Mom, please, we got this. Go. And I was like, wow. Really? And uh, yeah, he, was, he said we were getting kind of sick of you. That's leave it to a 12-year-old boy to rock your world, which he did. And I kind of realized, my God, they really are. They're ready. And, and television is so, it, I'm, I can't say more exciting than it was, because I thought it was pretty thrilling back then. But uh, I think the opportunities for uh, female characters, for sure. And when, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, there's, there's, there's a, a, a lot of great work being done. And, and this character, uh, if she had been a lifetime politician, uh, A, they probably would have cast me. And B, it wouldn't really have interested me. I, I like kind of the fish out of, the, out of water. I like the idea that uh, I could play with how good at it she was. And um, I, I, was, I was fully intrigued by this. And actually, the, the Henry role was something that made me really know that I wanted to do it. Because I thought I wanted to be a part of an opportunity to show men on television relating to women in a much uh, more positive way. So. Well, and I think also what's really refreshing about this series is that she, Elizabeth, is totally n not cynical. She's right. not a cynical politician, and she is our gateway into this world of DC politics. And she is someone who is morally sure that we can identify with, who's going to kind of lead us in 
and explain how the system works a little bit, which is totally, totally different from the rest of the DC shows that are on the air right now. Yeah, we, that, and that was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, there, there's a plethora of shows that will tell you what's going wrong. But there are people who are giving their lives to service for our benefit, and I think that certainly deserves to be celebrated yeah. and on television, no doubt. Um, but I think, I mean, I, I a little bit treat Elizabeth's hopefulness as a, a bit of a dirty secret, because I, I think that it, if she really is to show that too broadly, well, I'm gonna hate her, um, <laughs> because there's, there's something about, I don't know, there's something about keeping it a little bit of a secret. Well, I just told you that was not a secret. <laughs> But, but I just mean that, that in, in that character, there was something, I was very intrigued with this idea, yes, of her being hopeful, you know, yeah. Well, certainly she can't show it too much around her staff, <laughs> who are pretty critical of her throughout the season. But I have to say, all of you have the best chemistry. Oh, that's and great. those are some of the funniest scenes <laughs> of the series. And we what, have I a mean, really good time. Everyone in this cast, like, what, what, what's the set like? It seems like a really well, fun I mean, set. I mean, if you really look at it, we pretty well hired all comedians. I mean, we did. Yeah. And that was not sort of by accident. I, I think that if you can really pull off comedy, you've got a pretty good shot at drama. Uh, not always true the other way. And, and we were very interested in the idea of, you know, having characters that could... Uh, spar and have some great energy and um, spunk. When well, you're also a producer, so were you involved with the casting at all? Did yeah. you have some say? I, I mean, I did. It mostly, I mean, all I did was mostly just say yes, because <laughs> it was like, oh my God, they want to do it? Yes! I mean, it was like down, literally like, ch -ch -ch -ch, like this. It was really exciting. And I have to say, you know, being in New York, this was, my thing was that it had to be shot in New York. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm sort of laughing because I look like I just walked out of the Sundance catalog. <laughs> I don't even know how this happened. I, I didn't have my glasses on. And I was like, well, I like red. And so I was, anyway, and then I walked out and I was like, oh my God, you idiot. Anyway, but I'm not really like that, I'm a New Yorker. And um, so anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so I wanted to shoot it in New York because I wanted access to the greatest pool of actors. I mean, th that was very intentional. You know. And we got them, a lot of them. Well, how did the decision to be a producer come about? Was that something that you were looking to do? Uh, yes, I mean, I think that the idea that you're going to commit so much of your life to something uh, and being in this position, I think it's, it would be weird not to be a producer yeah. in a sense. You know, I think it's, it was great because it meant that there were, there was a lot of meeting ahead of time and, and conferring with Barbara Hall and Morgan Freeman and, and Laurie McCreary. And uh, it, it's at times I'm honestly too tired and I uh, am a very lame producer. And someone will say, well, what are we gonna do about, we can't get the 60, you know, coils of electric into the Waldorf because, and I'm like, I, I don't care, I don't care. <laughs> don't, don't, don't light it. <laughs> I, I, Lori, you know, so, that's happened, and I confess, I, I, that's happened. What, what do they say when you do that? She's tired. <laughs> <laughs> but we have fun, we have fun, a lot of fun on this job. Well, I was going to ask what is it like to be a producer and number one on the call sheet, but I think you just... Power, baby, <laughs> power. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I mean, we, again, we have a really good time, and, I, and to me, I think, that if, if you're number one on the call sheet or, or, or and a producer, you know, there's something about setting the tone. And I, I would rather be lucky than good, and I would rather have fun than have a job. 
I, I just, it's just too important. I'm too old. I, I don't want to screw around with uh, not having fun and, and not um, being turned on by it, you know? So, uh, so we do. And the show has a lot of actors who direct episodes. Eric Stoltz has directed a couple of episodes. Yeah. Jay Donovan has directed yeah. a couple of episodes. Is there a difference when you get someone directing you who has been an actor for a period of time? Yes, I mean, I don't think that it excludes the possibility that you get a director no, who's never not. acted, who's, of course, uh, a great communicator and will communicate in the language that we know. But um, I think the funny thing is that when Eric came on, I was so kind of starstruck. <laughs> and I thought, this is sort of weird. Like, it's Eric Stoltz. And then I got really used to him. And now it's like, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, the first day it was like, whoa. Um, and he is the most down to earth, uh, enthusiastic guy. And that, that, that goes for a lot on a, on a set because you, these are these long hours and days. And Eric remains always full of energy, and, uh, and he's, he's just so good. I mean, he's really good. And are you, is, it just, is season two just gonna be a one-woman show, or are you gonna start directing episodes in addition to starring and producing? Well, I, I, I do wanna direct at some point, definitely. Um, I, I figure that's the coma episode, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, that'll be mine. <laughs> Some of my best work. I'm picturing just lots of lingering, loving close-ups of you in your coma, yeah. just sleeping, just looking radiant. I can so nail that. <laughs> I mean, that is gonna be, I actually, uh, I did fall asleep in one scene, and it was hilarious because I was just like, the, we are in the bedroom in the master bed, and I was like this, and Tim, was just talking away, and it was so soothing. <laughs> and, and I just remember kind of doing that, and Tim goes, oh my God. <laughs> and I sort of came around, and I was like, no, 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 no. Here we go, here we go. But, you know, that's a great testament again to how comfortable <laughs> everybody is. Or that's a lovely spin on you falling asleep <laughs> during a scene. Uh, well, I have to ask, because we are here with the SAG Foundation and SAG After members, uh, how did you first get your SAG, your SAG card, I guess it was called? Yeah, my SAG card. Uh, it's so funny, I'm going back in my mind, I'm thinking, did, I just wanted to please God, did I cheat? <laughs> <laughs> we would have to kick you out. Um, no, I did, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know, I didn't cheat. But I, I don't know, I, I think I did. And you know, I remember actually thinking, when I talked to somebody about it, they said, well, the thing is, you do two jobs, and then you get your SAG card. Okay. But if you don't have your SAG card, you can't get a job. <laughs> I was like, is this a trick question? <laughs> what? So, and then I, there was something like, there was a commercial, and I think it was for, oh my God, it was for Massachusetts Mass Lottery. And, and it was ridiculous. And they were like, basically, if you had legs, we're putting you on the beach and you just run across in a, like a ducky kind of a thing around your waist, uh, a bunch of you. And, uh, and I said, that is ridiculous. And they said, you'll get, it'll count as a job towards your SAG card. I... <laughs> do you want me to do it again? So I do remember that was one, and then I don't remember how I got that second job that you can't get without a SAG card to get your SAG card, but um, I, I, I guess I got it. 
I think I need to see it. I'm not sure I believe you. And I really wish this was one of those shows where I could say, cut to the YouTube commercial, and I have it on YouTube, but uh, alas, it's not, I'm not that together. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I meant to ask earlier, because you are number one on the call sheet and because it's Madam Secretary and you're in almost every scene, how do you, because I'm fascinated by how actors memorize and what methods people use, how are you memorizing these pages and pages of dialogue every week? I don't know. <laughs> um, Is it, it just prayer? You know, I mean, I haven't resorted to like writing them on somebody's forehead yet. <laughs> yet. But... I will tell you, when we were doing the pilot, we had, I had five weeks from knowing that I was going to do this to shooting. And um, it took me five weeks to memorize the pilot. And all I could think was, I am screwed. <laughs> like, I am screwed. And I called David, and I said, I do not remember on the X-Files, how did you do this? Like, how did you do this? And he said, well, you, you'll see, you get better at it. You'll, you'll be fine. I thought that was like the worst advice. <laughs> I was like, you asshole. I, you know, it's like, you're my one help, you know, like I called you and you're like, don't sweat it. <laughs> this is, uh, it'll just happen. Um, so then the crazy thing is, it just starts to happen. You actually, it's like a muscle. And by the, I will say, by the last episode, uh, what was, what's great about getting that power, that muscle really working, is that I, could, I was then free to just go over and over the script and think about it less in terms of, holy God, this needs to be said tomorrow, and more in terms of, well, what's, what are we gonna do here? What's Elizabeth, let me take her through. And I could really, I could relax into it better. I, I think um, in the beginning, I think you can see the whites of my eyes in the first four episodes, because <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> I mean, I, after every line, I'd sort of look at somebody and be like. <laughs> so. But by the end, my God, I was like, yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Um, and and I'm, my only fear is that over the summer, like, I don't know this muscle. Because <laughs> I'm just blonde. But I, I just mean, I don't know this, I don't know this muscle. I don't know how long this lasts. So I was actually thinking, like, I said to my daughter, who's, she's doing her finals and stuff, and I said, oh, I'm gonna study with you for your finals. And I'm gonna cram, and I'm gonna see if I can memorize your finals by Thursday. Uh, How did that go? Uh, I am glad that she is taking it, <laughs> and not me. I was like, wait, wait, what? God, you know, it's chemistry. It's totally unfair. Why would you do that to yourself? I just because I thought that I need to keep it alive. You know, like, keep that muscle going. Keep flexing it. So then I tried poetry because I thought, well, that's more sort of my line of stuff. And I thought I would go, and no offense to him, seriously, but Frost, because I figure he's kind of a little bit like Neil Young. Like, you kind of know that, like, what the next line's going to be a little bit. <laughs> like, it's, no, 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 no. I, it's just familiar, and it's, or like Dylan. You know what I mean? You like hear Dylan, you're like, nah, 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 And so I, um, I set out with a couple of Frost poems, and uh, no, that appears to be yet another muscle, is poetry. <laughs> so this has basically become a fabulous party trick, which is that I can memorize Elizabeth McCord but fast. I just can. And that's not poetry, not chemistry, nothing else. <laughs> and that's the truth. David was right. <laughs> you talked about doing the pilot with the whites of your eyes showing. What was it like revisiting Elizabeth after, what was it, five months between filming the pilot and going back for the series? Yeah, that's, a, that's interesting. Um, 
Well, I, 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 yeah, that's very interesting, actually, because I had some time to kind of rethink some of the choices that I'd made in my head uh, that luckily maybe you didn't see. <laughs> so I did. I kind of, I tweaked her a little bit. And uh, I sometimes, this is just a little thing, uh, underwear is very important to me in a character. It just is. I got to know that I have on the right skivvies before I walk out. I got to know it. I got to, not like now. I just mean, I mean, you know, whether this is a Haynes person or, a, you know, those Brazil back ones. I haven't really played one of those gals in a long time. <laughs> but I, I, I will tell you. I'm not going to tell you what I went to, but I changed her underwear. I did. I did. Well, hopefully on a weekly basis. <laughs> weekly. Um, just little secrets. <laughs> but other than the underwear, because I'm, I'm just you curious, because real you're, you're living with her for five months, yeah. but not doing anything, not performing her. Yes. So what were you, what were you rethinking? Well, I, I, it's not even so much that. I mean, I think, you know, if I'm going to do a character, I like to have a few... Uh, congruent truths about them. And it may be a gesture with the underwear or a stance or some way that I can rock back into them. Because let's face it, not every day is like, oh, I feel like going to work. I feel great. I have no problems. And I have kids. I mean, I've like, there's a full thing happening. And, and with Elizabeth, I have to say, it was kind of interesting to me, I, I got to put it to the test, because in yeah. film you don't. You know, yeah. you sort of like drop it unless you do a sequel. Why am I even going there? I don't even know. But, um, so for this it was a little bit, it was a strange experience, but I found that that technique really helped. Like I could find her by just kind of adjusting my body back and sort of, you know, you kind of feel it. And you say, there she is. And I don't know, you, I need that, I need that. Did you rewatch the pilot before filming started again? That's funny. No, I don't do that. I don't like to. I, I think this the strange thing. It's sort of like listening to your voice on your voicemail or whatever that is now that the kids call it. Uh, outgoing message, something. Anyway, uh, and you know it's awkward and it's not how you see it, and I, I think it's very difficult for actors. I mean, if I'm ever going to critique something or edit it, I watch it three to four times, back to back, right through like this, and get out all this, like, wow, my teeth are huge. <laughs> like, just get it out, just like get past it, and then you can start to see, yeah. you know, the whole project, and, and now that happened, that did, that happened. I was, I, that was what happened. I saw a family guy, what it, was it, family man. Not Family Guy. <laughs> that was totally different. Uh, I remember when I saw Family Man for the first time, and, and it was this beautiful movie, and all I could think was, my front teeth are enormous. <laughs> I'd never had that thought. And uh, anyway, what was the question? <laughs> no, you answered it. <laughs> what? But this is the last question, because we have to leave. Okay. Um, what do you wish you had known about acting before you started? <laughs> um, well, uh, gosh, so much. I mean, I think the crazy thing about what we do is that uh, you can't kind of log your hours. You can't take those great classes and work with those great abusive coaches who really get you in there and <laughs> strip you down raw and naked, build you back up, put it up, be tin foil. None of it really does the trick. You know, you get out there and every day I feel aware of how vulnerable uh, we are. It's a very vulnerable uh, and ironically lonely artistic profession. We're surrounded by people. We need at least one other guy to do it, unless you're going to be a monologist. Again, why, why do I go on these tangents? <laughs> but um, You always find your way back, though. I, 
So I, I think in some ways, I wish I'd known that. I'd known to, I wish I'd known to expect that, that, that to be uh, proud of myself for being willing to stand up there and do it and be judged, not my canvas over here or my book that I wrote there or my sculptor, but me, my instrument. I mean, it is, it is a scary path that we have. I, I always, you know, the younger people will say, I, I'm really thinking about becoming an actor. Like, do you have any advice? And I would say, uh, have you tried everything else first? <laughs> um, and, and <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. That's, my that's it. That's all we have time for. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, De Leone, for coming. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys. Everyone Thanks have a great night. Coming.